Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86 Gaming. Currently going on right now at the time that I'm filming this is CES 2017. It's the Consumer Electronics Show and they've got a lot of cool stuff to offer. Uh, showing things from startups, things that may or may not make it in the future to things that definitely will make it. Changes that are coming from AMD with Ryzen, the 270s, the KB Lakes, all of this stuff is going to be announced there over the next few days. Now, I've been fortunate enough to get my hands on one of these things, and that's going to be the Aorus Z270 Gaming Motherboard. It's a gigabyte subsidiary company, Aorus. If you've ever seen their laptop, we're going to take a look at that. Let's preface this first by talking a little bit about the difference between the 97, the 170, and the 270 chipset. Are you going to need it? Is it a big enough upgrade? Is it something that you need to have? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, and then we're definitely going to go over some of what this has. I have one right over here. I was fortunate enough to get one, and I want to bring a review to you about it. Just a little bit touch over. I also will mention that there's going to be plenty of videos out there about this stuff, and I recommend people check their sources all over. Go go see everything you can, and uh, make sure that you get a good full grasp of what you're looking at here. And I'll try to cover as much as I can about what I know about it, and then we're going to actually do a KB Lake build with this. So one of the questions you're probably asking yourself a little bit with this chipset, is it something that I need to upgrade to? To. Do I need to go KB Lake? We all know that there's people out there that are going to go from their Sky Lake to their KB Lake like that. No big deal. That's what they want to do. That's fine. Hey, do your thing. I'm all for that. But the thing is, and the truth is, you're really looking at a lateral side grade more than you are a real upgrade if you're using the 97 or the 170 chipsets with the fifth and sixth generation of Intel processors. Uh, you're not looking at anything that's a major improvement. We're still looking at the 14 nanometer design. Uh, it's an 1151 socket that's that's going to fit this and be backwards compatible with Skylake itself. So if you're building fresh, then maybe this is where you want to start for sure, is uh, get something that's 270 and start working off of that for the next year until they come out with their 370, 470, who knows, whatever. So the biggest features about this is there's a lot more back channel lanes in it. So that gives you the ability to be able to use, for instance, this time M.2 without sacrificing two of your SATA ports, which is something that's pretty nice. One of the things that I really wish I could see differently here that some motherboard manufacturers, I believe ASUS is 270 is going to kind of feature it, is a better solution for where that NVMe M.2 is going to go because some of the problems we have with them is under stress, the higher ones especially, get hot and that, that takes away and, and causes degradation and, and decreases lifespan. So it would have been nice to have seen this moved somewhere away from danger. Now, Aorus and Gigabyte did it on this motherboard a little bit, giving you one option above where your GPU is going to be, your top PCI X16, and that's something that should be mentioned as well. That's great instead of just having it squished up under the very hot GPUs with not a lot of circulation. Now, one of the other features that we're going to be looking at too is Optane support. Intel's Optane was developed by Intel and Micron, and it's 3D crosspoint technology. I believe Micron calls it QuantX, and they disagree a little bit on where it kind of belongs. It's the new future. Uh, revolutionary mass storage solution that you know kind of takes it up a notch from like the Intel 750 series and the Evo 960s it takes it to the next level of giving you a lot faster storage and a lot more storage and it's just something that's awesome to read about and on paper it sounds great but the problem with it is even if you're looking at $480 for a 960 or 950 uh, M.2 storage one terabyte with something like Optane, if it's at minimum five times more, that's $2,400 for a terabyte. I'm not sure that that necessarily has a place for your average consumer and it'd be more so for the enthusiast. One of the things Micron said is it's going to be a small market at best until if we can get this on the consumer level, there's not going to be a lot of demand for it. A lot of people that can afford it, it just doesn't fit there. But for high-end businesses and cloud servers, things like that, that's where 3D Crosspoint's really going to shine. However, the motherboard does support Intel's Optane technology, and that's something to look forward to if we get the price range that we hope for. Now, I don't have any definitive prices on that, but based off of a lot of the reading I've done and research I've done from 2015 to now, 3D Crosspoint point is still somewhat of an inobtainable thing for most of us. Now there's some of you sitting out there sitting on millions of dollars while you watch this thinking, man, I can buy whatever I want. But I mean, if you really think about it, that's the price of building an enthusiast computer just to have storage. And how much better is it really? I'll do a video on that if you're interested in it. Let me know down below and uh, I'll look into doing a video on that for maybe some theoretical comparisons. But I don't think that it's going to be good enough to be worth $24, $2,500 at the lowest. Uh, anyways, guys, let's look at a few things about the Aorus Gigabyte motherboard here and uh, something I also want to say about it. Aorus is their subsidiary brand and they've been making laptops for a little while now and I guess Gigabyte's trying to do a reboot design aimed towards the enthusiast. I, I kind of imagine it like Toyota. Think about the hipsters and trendy people that don't want to own a Camry or Corolla but still want to own a Toyota. Well, they bought a Scion, you know? 
So Scion is sort of that subsidiary company of Toyota, and that's sort of what we're looking at here. It's aimed towards a different demographic of people, people that are into the discotheca light party things and all that good stuff, but a little bit more high-end stuff on the motherboard itself. So it's going to exist beside Gigabyte in the marketplace, much as Asus and Republic of Gaming or the Strix series exist. And these are all... Uh, just different ways to market towards different people but you're coming in with some better stuff here hopefully still designed by the great manufacturer gigabyte that's been doing it for a long time i stand behind that company i've used them plenty in the past not so much recently but uh i guess we'll get to take a look at that and see what we think as we go on here i hope hopefully this aor's brand uh is uh, pretty stellar and shines bright and i think it will because i've seen nothing but beautiful aesthetics from them and the laptop designs all of that so hopefully we've got something really good to work with here and look at and I'm a little anxious to go over some of the features of it. Let's uh, get into looking at it a little bit, and we'll talk a few things about it. The features it has, the input ports on it, the crazy amount of lighting abilities that it really encompasses here. So let's look at it. This is one nice looking motherboard. I love the neutral color schemes, the blanks, the whites, the grays. The Aorus logo really makes it pop. I just think it looks really well done, and it's gonna be a choice for a lot of people, I feel like. As somebody that wants to build with a 270 chipset, it just looks great, and it's just, completely covered in LED lights which is nice because RGB is the thing nowadays and everybody wants that. Using Fusion you can make it do neat things like dance to music and what what have you. I mean it's just it's really cool to have that. That's just like a must have feature this day and age. We'll go over a little bit of that as we kind of get into looking at it here. It's a beautifully well constructed motherboard. I really like it and I do think it's going to be a consumer choice along the way. Above the X16 lane we have the M.2 and it's just well placed right there. A little bit out of the way where we're more used to seeing them between the four and eight lane right here and that's kind of the danger zone that we didn't want to have to keep it there we wanted to move it if possible implemented u.2 in the back is another nice plus for this motherboard all around with three options for sata express you no longer have to sacrifice your sata ports to make room for m.2s extra headers for 3.0 if you're building in a large case and a nice place to plug in the additional lighting in the case that's going to be controlled by the motherboard as well using the fusion and that's something that's cool too you also have some rgb led lanes in between your DRAMs slots and that's something that's nice to be added as well i mean sure why not we're gonna make this thing like a christmas tree let's do it here under the aorus logo we also have some more nice beautiful lighting that's going to come up right there as well as down here near the audio logo so this is something that's just pretty neat and we'll go over a few things your oc and your eco setting here with your turbo and xmp profile light up right there on the side comes with USB-C, HDMI 1.4, and a display port to plug in if you're going to use the 620 integrated graphics. I don't think you will. You also have Generation 1 3.1 on the top and Generation 1 3.1 where the blue is on the bottom. Two Ethernet jacks for your awesome LAN abilities. And you also have USB 2.0, the black ones there in the middle, and some nice connections. Guys, I hope some of this was insightful to you and showed you a little bit about it and something to look at, at least for now. And uh, when we get into building the KB Lake build, then we'll be able to see it more in full effect and how awesome it is. And we'll go over some more stuff at that point as I'll be working on that over the next few weeks. So keep in mind that uh, this is going to be a project for me on the side and we'll definitely do a good video on it. Hopefully do a good video on it. Be sure to go check out some other reviews on it. Read about stuff like this if you're interested. 3D Crosspoint. Check out other YouTubers that are reviewing the new 270 chipsets that are coming out. I really wish I could be at CES myself, but I am jealous of them. And uh, maybe next year, right? Maybe I'll head there next year and be able to take you guys around on a camera and have a good time, but not this year. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it covered something for you, a little bit about what you were looking for. If you have any questions, post them down below. I can cite some sources for you, links, whatever you're interested in looking at. You guys have a great day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next videos that I do. Real quick before I forget, I want to give a shout out to Razer. He did a great job just kind of redoing the art for my channel. He volunteered himself. I paid him for it. I would say I recommend it. Check him out if you want. I'll put a link to his Twitter down below. He's got a little price list posted. He's cheap for now until he gets good. I imagine he'll start jacking those prices up. So if you're somebody that's interested in some custom graphics, he can do it. Not that I can't do it. I'm just not as artistically inclined as he is. I mean, you've seen my videos, right? Anyways, guys, have a great day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video that I do. I want to give a shout out real quick to Newegg. They made this review possible for me because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have been able to uh, come across this product so quickly and be able to get something out there. And I really appreciate that. Uh, so there's something to be said about that. But this review is fair and honest in my opinions only and not associated with that of Newegg. But I do want to make sure that when somebody has done something like that for me, that they get the thanks they deserve. So I appreciate you guys having my back, having the little guys back. It means a lot. I'm not sad that I'm not at CES with you, but I hope you guys are having a blast and I will hopefully see people in the next video that I do.